such a weird reaction to the Amazing Spider-Man 2 vlog. I, I don't even know how to take this. I don't know if people are so much sticking up for the movie as, as not liking the vlog. I, just, I don't know what it is. Um, the, uh, yeah, I've, I've shut down the comments section to that, to that vlog because... I, honestly, I haven't really paid that much attention to the YouTube comments since like 2009. Um, I, I guess I've been paying attention to my own uh, my own forums and my own comment section because of the far more intelligent discourse going on. I had forgotten what a fucking toilet the YouTube comment section is. It's it's strange, but yeah, it's it's not like I'm afraid of the comments going on. It's just that it's 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 actually fucking hilarious. What's what's going on there? I was I was. For the first time in so long, I was looking through there, and the reactions are just, it's its kind of funny. It's like, um, it's not because it's angry. Shit, man, I thrive on that. The fucking flames were funny. What what kind of offended me was the, uh, was the fucking childishness and the ignorance. I, I really like when people have, like, well-formed arguments, but YouTube is not the place to come for that. But it was it was really a, a, the the prevailing reaction by far was the was the all caps. It, it, it was almost always in all caps. And, you know, you're going to get an intelligent reaction when it's in all caps, of course. And I know. Right. I know. Right. When you're like when I say YouTube is is a fucking toilet or like the comment section is ignorant. But like, welcome to the Internet. Right. So, like, when I say all caps, you're going to get a stupid response. At least, like, primarily it was spelled correctly, which surprised me. But the prevailing response was, Why is this two and a half hours long? Or, This is longer than the movie! It, it, it was so hilarious. Um, and I was like, No shit! Do you not know me at all? You know, like, this is how I operate. This is, I, I ramble like a motherfucker. You know, this is like, this is what I do. I make really long vlogs where I nitpick and overanalyze shit. I talk about movies forever. That's the point of these vlogs is like, I, we, it's, it's like you're sitting on a couch with me and we just bullshit about movies for a long time. It's not like a serious review. Not really. It's like we're sitting on a couch and having like a round table discussion or as close as you can get with me. And it's like we're having a discussion about the movie and it's it may be nitpicky probably is sure but it's not really a review it's a vlog it's a long vlog but that's it you know so it's if if that's like the reaction that kind of annoyed me uh it, that's but it was like and then and then the reaction was the was again funny to me but kind of annoyed me was the second half of it was two and a half hours long unsubscribed which said to me they were like they saw the video saw the length of it didn't watch it but unsubscribed it was like they they saw the video were so offended by the length of it and then unsubscribed out of spite i was like really you you just saw the video and were so horrified by the ah ah no ah spoonie made a long video no and they just refused to they, they they're like no i'm done with spoonie he made a video that i don't want to watch one video and he's just done i was like wow but they still felt compelled to make a comment about it you know to to announce they are they're taking a stand you know i did really really strange this this reaction so um I was just looking through there, and I found these responses. I, I I was confused. So the reason I shut down the comments was I, I I felt the need to address some of them, and I know this was probably a bad idea, but I still wanted to do it anyway. Because partially to address the comments, I, I don't feel like spending a lot of time on this, but I also wanted to address the few issues that were brought up about the movie that maybe I could articulate a little better. But uh, to the comments themselves, which were mostly directed at me, um, which, again, do you not know me at all? One of the comments was, again, horrified. They were like, Spoonie's so angry. Spoonie's, he's so angry, unsubscribed. And I'm like, again, angry? Spoonie, oh, hey, Spoonie's angry? What the fuck? 
Abandon ship! Unsubscribe! Ah, oh, Spoonie's angry! Yeah, like my earlier videos, I was, I was Mary fucking Poppins. You know, I was, I was singing about sugar and rainbows before. What the fuck are you smoking, man? Like, that's who I am. Wear a fucking helmet. <laughs> Welcome to the site. Welcome to the fucking channel. Spoonie's angry. The sky is blue. Fuck you. Like, <laughs> what's the matter with you, you pussies? Can you not? Why are you here? You're you're on the YouTube fucking comments section and you're calling me pissed off. You're writing comments in all caps and you're accusing me of being fucking angry. Fuck you. <laughs> what the hell? Yeah, that's that's a valid complaint. Spoonie's so fucking angry. Whatever. Yeah. Okay. The third one was um uh, I liked I liked this one was um uh. This one was made me laugh. Was um, uh, I've lost all respect for Spoonie because you know five minutes in I've lost all respect for Spoonie, um, and I'm like, really, you've lost all respect for my opinion because I didn't like the Amazing Spider-Man two. Unsubscribed, and I'm like, wow, that's all it takes, huh? You've lost all respect for a man's opinion because I didn't like a movie. A comic book movie. That's all it takes. Yeah. You know, that's like, um, that's, that's something special. You know, expressing a political opinion, okay. Uh, issuing an opinion on abortion, okay. I can see that, maybe. You know, make... I, I, I could see it. but Spider-Man. Oh, I draw the line. You know, your, your opinion on every single thing is invalid to me. Spider-Man, no! <laughs> oh, he didn't like Spider-Man. That's unsubscribed. Your opinion is just worthless to me. You're drawing the line. Okay, that's it. That's all right. You know, and they're like, uh, that's, that's, that's pretty cool, man. Um, that's what I'm talking about with, with childishness is... Wow. Anyway. You know, and, and then they're like, um, they're like, you know, Spoonie's so arrogant. He's so arrogant. Like, two and a half hours, you know. They're like, why would I want to watch something that's two and a half hours? Oh, my God, Spoonie. You're so arrogant in thinking somebody will want to watch two and a half hours. And I'm like, I don't expect you to watch two and a half hours. If, if, if you don't like it, don't fucking watch it don't fucking watch it if you see a vlog it's two and a half hours long it's about a movie you may not care about for the movie you don't care if you do care about it but you don't want to watch something that's two and a half hours don't fucking watch it you don't have to unsubscribe don't fucking watch it skip ahead if you want to but if you don't want to watch it don't fucking watch it and then somebody's like you're so arrogant like, you're telling people not to fucking watch it? You're telling your fans not to fucking watch it? You don't have to fucking watch it if you don't want to. It's just a vlog. It's me and April talking to you bitching about a movie. So I didn't like it. I was nitpicking the shit out of the movie. And we were doing it for two and a half hours. The movie fucking sucked. It sucked so bad. And we were talking about the fucking zillions fucking horrible things about it. We were overanalyzing the movie to death. And yeah, we did it for longer than the movie ran. So fucking what? If you didn't like it, don't fucking watch it. And yeah, I was telling my fans not to watch a video if they didn't like it. I wasn't putting a gun to your fucking head. Don't fucking watch it. So that's it. That's all I'm telling you. Some people like to listen to the videos in the car. Some people like to listen to the fucking videos at work. Some people like the videos that way. I just make them. You can choose to watch them or not watch them. You don't have to unsubscribe just because I make a video that you don't want to watch. That's the bottom line. Fucking opinions on YouTube. Just go to fucking... There, there's no middle ground. They're either zero or fucking 11. You know? Again, I, I don't know why this surprised me. Again, it's just because like I hadn't listened to read them in years. Welcome to the fucking internet, Spoonie, right? I don't know, man, but it was like it was just that's why it was funny to me. 
So I, wow. I'm not, like, I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. Wow, it was stunning to me. But, like, if you are so childish, if, if and I know it's, it's arrogant for me to be like, you're going to drive viewers away, Spoonie. You're going to drive subscribers away by telling people, by telling your fans off, by telling your fans they're childish and, and telling them not to watch your videos if, if, if they don't like them. And I'm like, you know what? If they are so childish as to, as to see a video that's two and a half hours long and be so offended by this, or if they're so offended by me not liking a movie that five minutes in they lose all respect for my opinion and unsubscribe out of this, if you are so childish as to unsubscribe because I express an opinion or the way I express an opinion to them that you will unsubscribe, you will not be missed. You know what? That's like that's how I am. You know, I I am a I express my anger in a certain way. This is who I am. You may not like my opinion, but you can trust me to be me. That's that's just what I do. This is what I do. This is who I am. I make funny videos sometimes. You know, I, I I do funny reviews. I do vlogs sometimes. I talk about RPGs. This is the person who I am. You either like it or you don't like it. If you don't like it, unsubscribe. That's all I can ask. You know, the, the, the true fans will stick around. They like the videos, they watch. That's that's it. You know? I'm not I'm not expecting you to stay around if you don't like what you see. That's you know, that's I I love my fans. I love my fans to death. I, I really do. And it's it's but it, it seriously, I would not be here without my fans. I've not forgotten that. But it's it's like sometimes it's like the people who are on the site are like unsubscribe like it's trying to hurt my feelings it's like you're not if anything it's like you're wasting your time you're like okay you saw a viewer count and or you saw a time count and you're like i i'm an asshole unsubscribed you know it's like okay fine but it's i i don't know man it's just that's why i i, I shut him down i was just like you're kind of wasting your time here but i'll talk about it if you want to um, so yeah, I'll keep, uh, fine. But, you know, the, the few intelligent comments is what I wanted to address here. But, um, yeah, so, uh, in regards to, some people were like, um, did you not, do you not read the comics at all? Because it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, I've read a lot of the comics. Um, but it's kind of confusing to me. So, uh, Partially, it seemed like they're like, well, I, I can't trust your opinion because it doesn't seem like you were paying attention to the movie at all. In fact, it's you said you weren't. This is kind of true because this movie immediately took me out of it with that stupid fucking driver and the fact that it was so, it was so just alien to me, you know, it, it so wasn't at all serious. And by that, I mean, you know, somebody was like, well, this guy, I, you said you said this guy was leaning out of the car shooting cops. And I was like, people are dying. You know, the cops are getting mowed down by the dozens. And he's like, well, you clearly see the guys ducking behind the car. They're not getting shot. And I'm like, that's only because this is a PG movie in any kind of real life scenario. And I know it's a comic book movie, but if this was if this was not a PG-13 movie or PG movie, these cops are getting be getting gunned down by the dozens. And really these cops would be getting gunned down. And they're still, this guy is still plowing through intersections. I'm not even kidding you. This guy is plowing through taxi cabs. This guy is fucking destroying cop cars. I guarantee you, these cops and taxi drivers are getting killed. And it's all because Spider-Man is standing on the side of this car, fucking jawjacking with this driver when he could just knock him out. Somebody was like, well, that's what Spider-Man does. He wisecracks. Yes, he does. He wisecracks. But... He only wisecrack. He doesn't wisecrack while people are actively getting killed. And if he does, Spider-Man is an asshole. And J. Jonah Jameson is absolutely right in every single thing he says about Spider-Man being a menace to society. That would be an interesting twist on the movie, but that's not what they're going for here. You know what would? And this is like, it would be the sign of a better filmmaker if they made a scene where the wisecracking made sense. Here's a way to do it. If there was a reason why Spider-Man could not just knock this guy out. Maybe if he stuck his head in the window and was like, hey, how you doing? I'm Spider-Man. And there was a second guy in the cab who prevented him from knocking the guy out. Maybe a guy with a gun 
in the like the passenger seat started shooting at Spider-Man instead of the instead of the driver prevented him from shooting him. So like he was wise cracking at at the guy while dodging the bullets. Or maybe a guy started fighting Spider-Man kept kept him from knocking the guy out. And you had a fight scene on top of the truck while he fought the guy on the cab. Okay, now you're like, well, Spider-Man could just easily beat the guy up. What if you had a guy who could hang with Spider-Man in a fight? There are several guys in the Spider-Man villain, whatever you want, roster, who could hang with Spider-Man in a fight, who's not necessarily super-powered. And you'll pardon me if I, if I fan-wank a little bit. Batrock the Leaper! What if the mercenaries, what if the Russian guys hired Batrock the Leaper and Spider-Man sticks his head in the window and Batrock the fucking Leaper sticks his leg out and nearly kicks him in the face? And then Spider-Man's like, oh shit, this guy's fast. And then Batrock the Leaper like swings out the window, pulls Spider-Man out of the cab and they have a fucking fight scene on top of the truck. And for like two minutes, him and Spider-Man start beating the shit out of each other on top of the truck. That would be better than this stupid thing where he's like, like ah, and he's wisecracking and like shooting and then he's hanging on the side of the truck. That's stupid. It doesn't make sense. He could have just like webbed the guy, knocked him out and stopped the truck. Instead he's like jaw jacking and then... It's such a bad scene. It doesn't make any sense. He endangers lives and it's so poorly scripted. It's just bad. And it's all an excuse for him to get... It's all an excuse for him to get the wisecracking in because that's what Spider-Man does. And he could do that with a fight scene on top of the truck and still get his wisecracking in on Batrock the Leaper or whoever could be in the side of the truck because that would make more sense. And you'd get a fight scene out of it. You could introduce another Spider-Man villain and one they wouldn't fuck up. You know, like, wow, I'm coming up with better movies left and right here. You know, like... <sighs> Shit. It, you know, I noticed nobody's sticking up for the, for the characterization of Electro, who dominated like 80 fucking percent of the movie. Nobody's sticking up for the characterization of Harry Osborn. Nobody's sticking up for the, for the complete waste of Chris Cooper and Norman Osborn, who's one of the, who's one of the fucking cornerstones, the foundations of the Spider-Man character and the entire mythos of Spider-Man who's been f completely fucking wasted and swept under the carpet like he is nothing. Nobody's sticking up for the... They fucking savaged the entire storyline of Spider-Man. You know, just fucking raped this continuity here. It's terrible. Uh, but they're like, you know, it's like you haven't read the comics at all. Okay, I have. But it's like, you'll excuse me for not having an eidetic memory when it comes to Peter Parker's fucking parents because they've done, like, I've read, I've read the normal series and I've read the Ultimate series. And they've done two separate things with it. So you'll excuse me if I don't remember if they're fucking spies or they're fucking scientists on the run. But here's the thing. I don't know because the movies I don't think know. Here's why. When they're in the airplane... It seems like they're spies. Because they're having this discussion. They're on the airplane and they're talking like they're spies. They're on this they're on the airplane talking like have you uploaded the data to Roosevelt? And they're like, I'm working on it now. And he opens the laptop and he starts he hits a he hits an enter key and he starts uploading it. To where? We don't know yet, but it's someplace called Roosevelt. And they're like, Where are we going? And he goes, I, well I've got I've we're, we're, I've got a safe house in Geneva or something like that. He says, I've got a safe house in somewhere in Europe. And I'm like, okay. And he's like, don't worry, we'll be safe. And she's like, ah, I, I feel so bad for Peter. We can never go back, can we? And he's like, no, but don't worry. We did the right thing. So I'm like, N I'm immediately confused. Because later on in the movie, we see that it's like, we see that Richard Parker seems like he's a conflicted scientist because it's like Oscorp is making biological weapons or something like that and it seems like he objects to this notion and so we see him destroying the spider prototypes 
and fleeing Oscorp. So it seems like he's a morally conflicted, you know, biological uh, biologist or a scientist who learns this horrible secret, destroys things, and goes on the run with his wife. Because it's like Norman Osborn's going to have him killed because he's stealing these secrets and running off. But then, on the airplane, it seems like he's conducting industrial espionage or corporate espionage because he's stealing it and then all of a sudden he's uploading it to some secret server or some secret location and then he's talking about a safe house and and they're talking like they're spies like don't worry i've got a safe house in geneva do you think we'll be safe there don't worry i know what i'm doing and i'm like a safe house like normal scientists who who just live in New York and who who just give their son over to, you know, Aunt May and Uncle Ben, if they have a safe house, why would they give their... I, I don't get it. Like, if you have a safe house, that implies you work for somebody. It implies you work for a government or it, impl it implies you work for, like, a, an intelligence agency. To me... Like, people don't have safe houses. Like, I don't have one. Do you? In fucking Geneva or Switzerland? or I don't know where it was, but, like, let's just say it's Geneva. What the fuck? I, I, are they spies? I don't know. I'm fucking confused. But I know for a fact they said they had a safe house somewhere. So who the fuck do they work for? Who the fuck are they? Is it ambiguous? Are we going to learn this in Spider-Man 3? I don't fucking know. Who the fuck are they? So, like, don't, don't tell me I haven't read the comics, because I have. I may not remember exactly who they were, but on the other hand, I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to have read the comics to know exactly who Richard Parker is. This should stand on its own. And it doesn't. It doesn't stand on its own because it's fucking confused. I'm fucking confused watching the movie. Because they're, at first they're like conflicted scientists who are on the run from Oscorp, but then they're talking about fucking safe houses. I don't fucking know. I don't get it. And like, there, and then there's like Peter Parker is building his weird wall with strings on it with a big fucking question mark. And he knows there's something called Roosevelt, you know, where they're uploading some shit. And I'm like, okay. We don't know what Roosevelt is. He doesn't know what Roosevelt is. And then he Googles it. He Googles the word Roosevelt with like four question marks. He goes, what is Roosevelt? Like four question marks is going to like, because he's urgent. And then like, oh, four question marks. That's going to give an answer. But then he like, he, he smashes his graphing calculator and out pop these like subway tokens. And he's like, wait a minute, subway shit. So he Googles like all this stuff and it connects to a subway. And then Google, Google knows where a secret presidential subway station is that apparently served as some kind of fallout shelter or escape plan for President Roosevelt was. I don't know what it is, but like apparently some secret subway station for President Roosevelt was. Google knows where this is, or Wikipedia, or something like that. He can Google this. So he goes there, and he uses a magic subway token that opens a secret lab in this Roosevelt station that apparently for the better part of like 14 years has never been used, I would assume, but is still in pristine working order, is, you know, not, not dusty, but still in working order with functional computers, and it's, it's just there. Who built this? Why is it here? And why were the Parkers uploading their shit here? Did did they build it? Did the Parkers build it? Did Oscorp build it? Who knows about this? Does Oscorp know about it? Why were the Parkers uploading it here? One would assume that the Parkers were uploading it here so someone would find it. Why were... If they were uploading it here so someone would find it, who? And if they were uploading it here so someone would find it, why didn't that person find it? One would assume the person who was expected to find it would have found it by now. But if they were going to find it by now, why haven't they? Are they dead? 
if they, why wouldn't they have heard the part that, that the Parkers had died and gone and found it yet? Do they not have the magic subway tokens? If they don't have the magic subway tokens, why would they not have sought out their belongings? I don't understand this. I, I don't... It, did they intend for Peter to find it? That makes no sense to me. Because you would have thought they would have left a message for Peter. And the way they were talking, it seems clear they did not intend for Peter to get involved in this. I don't understand what is happening. Unless they were spies. But again, if they were spies, that would seem to imply that if they were uploading it to a secret lab for the spy agency, the spy agency would have sent someone to Roosevelt to recover the data. And they haven't! Or have they? I don't fucking know! But if the spy agency had sent someone to recover the data, would they not have then erased the data? But no, they wouldn't have. Because when Spider-Man goes to the lab, the data has just now, has just now, after 14 or so fucking years, has just now finished uploading. Because we see a little meter. As soon as he turns on the computer, it goes 99, 100% upload completed. What was this on a fucking 56.6 baud modem? This movie is stupid. And don't tell me it's because I haven't read the fucking comics. If I'd have read the fucking comics, don't tell me this would have made any more fucking sense. Who are these people? I don't understand this. It, I just, God damn it. I just, I, I'm trying to think of what else here. Uh, um, the movie trailers. The movie trailers are a complete fucking lie. Rhino is heavily implied to be a major villain in this movie. He appears in the last three minutes at most. There's so much that has been changed from the tra trailer to this movie. In the trailer, it seems to indicate that, like, Peter is being followed by Oscorp. It seems to be implied that Nora, that Harry is, like... It, it, seems, it seems like Harry is aware that Peter is Spider-Man and is sending people to, like, follow him around to, like, put surveillance on him. That's not the case in this movie at all. It only seems like, it, it never seems like the case that Harry is aware that Peter is Spider-Man. It only seems like their relationship has changed when when Harry notices that, that Peter is taking pictures of Spider-Man in the paper and then says like, I know you take pictures of Spider-Man, Peter, so you must know Spider-Man. Even though these pictures are of Spider-Man jumping off rooftops from like half a mile away. This makes no sense. Plus... There are no scenes earlier in the movie of Harry looking at a paper and then looking at the bo at the credit and going, wait a minute. It's only like in one scene, it's only in that, that particular scene where Harry just out of nowhere goes, Peter, I know you take pictures of Spider-Man. This scene is not foreshadowed. It comes out of nowhere. This reeks, reeks of a reshoot. This reeks of a script rewrite at the last fucking minute. I know this is a script rewrite. This comes out of nowhere. They must have changed this. This is bad fucking screenwriting. What was that other scene they changed? You said something was in the trailer. That they that they took out, there was like a line. Just the, the, the web design. Oh yeah, there's a scene. There's a scene where he's where Spider. Uh, uh, sorry, Peter and Harry are on the beach uh, and skipping rocks, and he's like, "What do you do?" And he goes, "Web design." I don't know if that's a joke or if that's what he actually does. Probably a joke, but that's that's out. So the trailer is like full of fucking lies. It's I hate that. I hate when a trailer is basically completely misleading in selling you on a movie. People weren't mad that we complained about the romance. That either they disagreed with the fact that, you know, Gwen and Peter were annoying or, you know, they had no chemistry, personal preference, whatever. Or they disagreed with the fact that it was so intrusive on the movie. They said that, like, 
well, that's just Spider-Man. You know, they go, half of the story is, you know, his romances and his, you know, the Parker luck. You know, the fact that, you know, yes, that's Spider-Man. It's melodramatic. It's about, you know, the majority of his stories are about his melodrama with his girlfriends. You know, you know Mary Jane and Gwen Stacy. And you're, I'm like, all right, all right. If that's the case... You're like that, you know. That's the comic book. Fine, fine. However, if you're gonna play that card, if you're gonna play the card that we're going like the comic book, if we're going by the logic that we're going like the comic book, that if it's like we're we're gonna say like, okay, if we're gonna chop, if if we're gonna if if we're gonna cram in all this melodrama with the Parker Luck and the fucking the the romances and the melodrama. Then, you know, we're going like, this is the Spider-Man formula. You know, this is how Spider-Man works. It's about his personal life. It's about him balancing his personal life and his girlfriends. Then it's also about his high school life. It's about his career. The majority of the story of Spider-Man is pretty much equally balanced between Spider-Man, his life, and his life with Peter Parker. But his life as Peter Parker is also split between his romance, his high school, and when he's graduated from high school, his life as a photographer at the Daily Bugle. Which has not been addressed ever in this fucking series. In fact, his life as a photographer was completely uh, backtracked and crowbarred, crowbarred into this movie at the last minute to justify the fact that he's been taking pictures of fucking Spider-Man all to accommodate that scene with Harry Osborn to justify that thing where he's like, you must know Spider-Man. If we're going to have that much Gwen Stacy, if we're going to have that logic where, of course, there's this much Gwen Stacy because that's the story of Spider-Man. That's the formula for Spider-Man. Fine. If we're going to have that, we need to have that much... We need to have the formula that includes the fucking Daily Bugle, and we need J. Jonah Jameson because he's as much, as much, or like the whole job, the photography aspect of the character, is as much of of a factor in Peter Parker as anything else. The nerd factor of Peter Parker is as much a factor as anything else. And they try, they try to include that, the nerd part, in the movie, and they fuck that up too. Because all they do is when they try to nerd him out is they fuck it up. They make him into an imbecile. And they they completely invert that by making Gwen fucking Stacy smarter than him. They fuck it up. What do they do with Peter Parker? They have him watching fucking YouTube clips of some jackass blowing up batteries. He's Peter Parker. He fucking, like, designed the web, web shooter shit. He's fucking this up now? What the fuck is happening here? So not only do they fuck up the the Daily Bugle shit, which is one of the best parts of the Spider-Man character, they fuck up the nerd shit too. Your logic is failed. You can't play that card with me. I can't believe, I cannot believe they took out one of the best parts. No, I'm sorry, they took out the best part of the Sam Raimi trilogy. The only part, really, that I remember with any kind of fondness from the Sam Raimi trilogy is the J. Jonah Jameson part. He was by far the best part. And they took that out. The only thing I could think of is they looked at that and they're like, there's no way we can top that. They probably couldn't. In fact, if I was going to do that, I'd have just recast the same guy. Shit. But you know what? We're just going to put that same guy in there. Because <laughs> my God, he nailed it. You can't top that. Jesus. I mean, wow. I don't know how you do that. I really don't. I don't I don't know how you can take the photography part out of it. That's borderline, like, betrayal level stuff, you know. 
and you can't just like Easter egg that in there where like Aunt May goes, you know, oh, are you selling those photos to the Daily Bugle? And she's, and he's like, yeah, that Jameson's a pretty swell egg. And then like, that's it. You can't do that. You can't make the whole high school thing like some afterthought. You can't make that where he just like shows up to graduation and then sweep the whole thing under the rug. The high school thing is like, when he's in high school, it's like his entire life. That That's like the whole thing he has to balance between that and being Spider-Man. You know, his relationship with Flash Thompson. Yes, I've read the comics and, and, and everything else. That's where, you know, that's, that's where he gets the whole nerd shit. This movie sucks. I don't know why anyone sticks up for this. It's, it's fucking terrible. And that's all I got. You know, that's... It's, it's unbelievable. So I'm going to cut this off here so people don't say, like, this is longer... This movie... This, this vlog's longer than the movie, too. So, yeah. I don't know, man. So I'm sorry if I ranted on the YouTube commenters because, honestly, a lot of the YouTube commenters aren't worth that much discussion. So, I mean... So don't let me, don't let, as much as I've commented on them, don't, those of you who are the, the real fans, don't let this much discussion, don't think that I'm lumping all of you in with those people. Don't think that. I recognize that the people who, who spout that much hate are, are, some, are uh, illustrative of the entire fan base. I don't think that. It's a very, 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 very vocal minority. I just want to... I, I just want to try to dispel some of this ignorance. Because that's the real problem with a lot of this shit going on on YouTube. Yeah, I'm going to fix the internet, you know? like It's just like... It's just so much ignorance, you know? I, I just got to try to clear some of this up. Like, my expectations of the fans, I have none. You know, I don't expect people to watch anything they don't want to watch. You know, I, I don't, if they don't want to watch something, don't watch it. You know, I, I don't expect people to, to do anything they don't want to do. Watch the reviews if you want to watch the reviews. I'm working so hard on the reviews right now. I've got this Patreon thing. If you don't want to donate to the Patreon, don't, don't donate to the Patreon. I'm not begging. This is something I put up if you want to do it. I'm working on a DVD right now. It's going to have all original content, and it's a reward on the Patreon. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't have to buy the DVD if you don't want to. It's on top of everything else. My next game review is on an Ultima game. It's I'm working on the script right now. If you don't want to watch that, don't. You know, whatever. So, it's... I'm going to leave the comments open right now. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm expecting is because I've shut them down, you're going to say I'm infringing on your First Amendment rights and you're going to call me Hitler. Whatever. You can do what you want. Free country. You know, it's just, that's why I've shut them down for now is just because, like, i got to clear the air here. You know, it's, but, like, it was getting kind of crazy. And I just, it's, that was the main thing. I was like, people are up, are upset like infuriated just ah all caps i have to yell it's two and a half hours no i was like you're angry you're angry that i was talking for two and a half hours then i was like forcing you to watch unsubscribe i was like don't click it anyway i've said the same thing too much but anyway uh i just hope that i just hope that people stop being so angry i'm just sitting here bitching about a movie if you disagree, you disagree. You don't have to lose respect for a guy. It's like, and, and like you shouldn't be surprised at the way I behave. I've always kind of behaved this way. It's that's just who I am. You know, you either like it or you don't like it. I'm I generally try to be amiable, I guess. But like when it comes to doing the reviews or when it comes to Talking about movies, yeah, I get passionate. Clearly, you do as well. But at least I, I try to come at it with uh, with a little bit of an analytical mind. But 
I also come at it with a degree of, uh, I, I, I approach it. I, I, again, people don't believe this. I, I do try to approach it with an open mind. Um, oh, uh, the last thing that really, really bothers me. I think the one thing that really did anger me and the one thing that continues to anger me is the reaction now that especially here was that the eye rolling cynicism that they go, Oh, Spoonie hates a movie. That's surprising. A lot of people continue to say that, you know, uh, you know, the reaction has Spoonie liked a movie this year. Motherfuckers. The last movie vlog I did with April was a movie I liked. The Captain America movie was the last movie vlog. And I really liked that movie. Before you open your big fat mouth about me not liking anything, why don't you check the, the backlog? Because you're a fucking idiot. You know, this whole Spoonie hates everything shit has gone too far. You know, it's and I don't I don't even know if you're trolling me at this point. If so, it, mission accomplished. But like, this whole Spoonie hates everything shit is not true. In fact, like, I like a lot of shit. It's, in fact, like, what's what's so funny about this thing is, a lot of the movie reviews I post, like the 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 review reviews, the official reviews, are of like guilty pleasures, of stuff of like bad movies that I like. I don't get you sometimes, you know, it's, it's so funny. It's, it's like, I, it's, it's amazing. This Spoonie hates everything junk. This all started with Pacific Rim. Can you believe that? This all started with my, and I just opened up Pandora's box by mentioning that fucking movie again. This, and now that I've said that this entire comment section is going to be about Pacific Rim, right? This all started with Pacific Rim where I said that movie was, and I quote, it was okay. I didn't even say that movie was bad. I said it was okay. And now I hate everything. You know? I love it. I love that. Man. Ever since then, I hate everything. It's unbelievable. So, yeah. You, you may now begin flaming me about Pacific Rim. But, no. I hated Amazing Spider-Man too. I hated it. So... You can flame me about that. You can flame me about anything. I am leaving the comments open about that. Torch away, because I can take it. Goodbye.